Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to bring you guys a review of the Pinter 2. Now, if you've been around this channel for a while, you'll know that I like tech and that I like music, and you might have caught on that I like beer. Now, this isn't something I've ever said, but I'm pretty sure I've worn some Brewdog merch in various videos. And today's video is going to be a little bit different because this is a review, but this is also kind of part tutorial and this is also going to be quite long because today I'm going to talk about the Pinter 2. Now the chances are, like me, about two months ago, you'd never heard of a Pinter before. And the Pinter is a way of brewing your own fresh beer at home. Now you might be wondering how brewing your own beer fits into a tech channel, but actually the Pinter 2 is packed with technology and also has its own app. Now, Pinter described the Pinter 2 as precision engineered technology to allow anyone to enjoy 10 pints of award winning beer at home brewed by you. And their whole philosophy is around fresh beer. Now, I've had this about two weeks and I've brewed my first beer and I've tasted it. And this is going to be all about my experience and my opinion of this device. So let's talk about the product and the build to start with, and then I'll move on to brewing and the quality and how it works. So when you buy a Pinter 2, you have a choice of colours. And there's a whole variety of really nice, vibrant colours out there. Personally, I went for the two-tone grey colour because I thought that looked super cool. When you purchase it, you also have the option to pick up a beer pack, which you're going to want to do. And then you can also set up a subscription. This subscription means that once a month you'll get however many packs you want delivered to your home. The monthly price varies depending on the beer you choose, but this does save you money over the long term and there are some rewards at certain months. This subscription can also be cancelled at any time on the website without having to phone anyone or go through lots of cancellation notices. This is particularly good because I think when you cancel something, you should be able to cancel it, not have to go through lots of hoops. If you go for the subscription at the same time, you also get two free Pinter glasses. Now, when it comes to the beer selection, Pinter have a pretty decent selection of beers to choose from. And there's currently 16 beers, including one alcohol free beer. There's a whole variety of styles to choose from, including stouts and Belgium style beers and very hoppy lagers. Pinter also add to the collection every so often, and there's also three ciders you can choose from as well. If you buy these beer packs individually, they cost between 13 and 20 pounds per pack, depending on the beer that you choose. Now, of course, when you get 10 pints out of that, that equates to about one pound 30 or two pounds a pint. This actually isn't a particularly bad price, and I don't know anywhere other than Weatherspoons you can get a pint for less than two pounds if you go out. So a Pinter itself costs around £130 and then roughly £15 a month per subscription. There's also quite regularly offers and in particular I've put a link below where if you use that you can get £20 off of your Pinter. So when the Pinter arrives, what's in the box? Now the first thing you notice when the Pinter arrives is that they've even thought about the unboxing experience. And this is a kind of unboxing experience I haven't experienced with any other product other than Apple products. Even removing the outer layer is particularly cool and it's just about removing some tabs and lifting it off. And then the actual Pinter box kind of folds out and then you've got this drawer underneath. This is such a cool unboxing experience and whilst boxes aren't anything to get excited by, this is about as excited as I get by a box. There's also something to be said about the quality of a product when the unboxing experience is so good. With the Pinter you get the brewing dock, you get a removable handle for your Pinter and you get an introductory book. You also get the beer pack you ordered and those free glasses as well. Each beer comes in its own box, which is letterbox size, so perfect for subscriptions. And inside those boxes, you get a fresh press, a purifier, and for some, a hopper. And I'll mention a hopper a little bit more as we go on. If you don't want to brew your beer straight away or if you've ordered multiple packs, you'll want to keep those you're not using in your fridge. Now, one of the really cool things about the box is that pretty much everything, including the tape, was made of cardboard. There was a little bit of plastic wrapping on the Pinter itself, but other than that, it was pretty much plastic free, which is really good. Unfortunately, in the beer packs, the bottles are plastic, but this is plastic you can recycle. It'd be great in the future to see Pinter think about more sustainable ways of packaging some of these beer packs. The design of the Pinter 2 itself is really quite nice, and there's something almost spaceship-like about it. It's got these really nice rounded edges, the kind of body joints to the top in a very sleek way, and it's got the Pinter logos in a couple of subtle places. The handle itself is made of metal and is removable, and this feels really solid. The same goes for the front plate. On the back of the Pinter, you'll find space for the hopper to go when you need to use one, and the pressure dial which you can adjust depending on your brew recommendations. Now this thing is pretty heavy and feels incredibly well made, which given the amount of pressure that can build up when you're brewing beer, is something you definitely want to have in place. 
The other really nice thing is that it's designed to come apart for cleaning. This includes the tapping mechanism. This means you can thoroughly clean your pinter between brews. Whilst the majority of the body is made of metal, there are a few plastic pieces, but even these feel pretty sturdy and well made. The real test will be how they last over time. So let's talk about the exciting thing. How do you get started brewing? And what you're gonna see throughout this video is clips of me going through my first brew because I recorded the whole process. Now the first thing you need to do is download the app. And this app will talk you through everything you need to do. It's available for Apple and Android, and it also works full screen on an iPad, which is really nice. The app has the ability to track your brews and sync them with your calendar, which is also incredibly useful. If you don't want to use the app, the videos are available on the Pinter website. The one downside, in my opinion, is that there are no written instructions that I could find. This means you're reliant on following videos rather than being able to follow a set of instructions, which at times might be actually a bit more useful. Now, I'd recommend watching the videos first, just so you know exactly what you're doing. Now, I wouldn't sit and watch all of them at once, but I'd watch the ones relevant to the thing you're about to do. So if you're about to start a brew, I'd watch the videos related to that. I'd also recommend getting the app because it does allow you to track your specific brews and know how long they need to brew for and condition for. It also syncs this with your calendar if you want it to, so you can get reminders of when it's time to tap your beer. Now, the first couple of times you use this, you're probably gonna to want to follow along with those videos as well. And this is gonna be important just to make sure you've got things like your carbonation dial settings in the right place, because too much pressure is a bad thing. And again, this is where written instructions would also be really useful. So let's talk about starting a brew, because the first stage is about purifying your pinter. This is done by adding hot tap water and using the purifier that comes with your beer pack. You put this in, you put the cap on, and you shake it around a bit to mix it. You then attach it to the brewing dock and let it sit there for a little bit. You then pass some of that water through your tap and then you empty it. This means your pinter is clean and ready to brew. Next, you want to fill it with five liters of cold water or up to the line in the pinter itself. It's really important that you don't go over this line and you can just use tap water, although some people on some of the pinter Facebook groups are talking about using bottled water just for a purer kind of beer. Of course, that's all personal preference. Next, you add in your fresh press and you wanna try and get as much out of that bottle as you can. Then you add the cap back on, you make sure your tap is locked and then you give it a bit more of a shake just to make sure it's all mixed. Now at this point, it's pretty heavy because the thing is made of metal and it's also got a lot of water in it. And so this is a bit of a workout for your arms. And then the final stage of brewing is to attach it to your brewing dock and leave it somewhere for the recommended time. Now getting the brewing dock in place takes a little bit of practice, but it does get there eventually. And this is where the videos for the app come in really handy. Now the amount of time your beer needs to brew for depends on which beer pack you're using. And this is where the app comes in handy because you can basically say which beer you're brewing and it will tell you how long it needs. It also gives you two different options. There's typically the recommended option and there's also an extended option, which you can also do. Once that dock is attached, you want to leave your pint to somewhere where the temperature is pretty consistent. And again, some beers need different temperatures, and so make sure you look at the instructions on your beer pack and in the app. For me, for the first time doing this, it took about 45 minutes because I was trying to follow those videos at the same time. But I can imagine over time, it's gonna easily just take about 20 minutes to get this setup done. And then that's where you leave it for however many days it needs. And after that time period has passed, the app will give you a nudge and say it's time to condition your beer. Or, depending on your beer pack, also time to add the hopper. And the hopper is a way of adding some extra hops into your beer to give it an even more fresher, hoppy taste. Now, I haven't actually tried one of these yet, but I'm really looking forward to trying one of these next month. At the conditioning phase, what you do is you take your pinter and you pop it in the sink because some liquid is going to be released as part of this process. You then twist it and remove the brewing dock. This is when the liquid is released. At this point, you want to give it a wipe down just to make sure it's nice and clean. And then you attach the plate back onto it and you attach the handle. You then pop it in the fridge without the brewing dock and leave it for a recommended time to condition. So at this point, you also want to give your brewing dock a thorough clean. It's worth noting at this point that the pinter is actually bigger than you perhaps expect it to be. For me, this meant that in my fridge, I had to remove the door shelf and also one of the shelves for it to fit in. Now this process of getting it ready to condition took me about 20 minutes, but I was watching the videos at the same time. Now the beer I was brewing and the beer you've seen me brewing is the Espresso Stout, the dark matter. And so this only needed a conditioning time of four days. So once that four days is up, the app gives you a nudge and says it's time to tap your beer. Now, of course, if you don't want to drink the beer that day, you don't have to and you can leave it for another day and that won't be a problem at all. And in fact, pinters say that beer in the pinter will keep fresh for up to 30 days. However, certainly for the first couple of times, when it's time to tap, you're gonna want to tap it just so you can try it. And really, when we're talking about tech, this is where the tech of the Pinter 2 is really cool. 
because it's got some special technology built in to make sure that you can tap your beer without losing the freshness. And for that to make sense, we need to talk very quickly about what freshness of beer means. And so typically for beer to stay fresh, it needs to be carbonated. Carbonated is the stuff that makes your Coca-Cola fizzy and all that kind of thing. But carbonated also means there's some kind of pressure. And so there is pressure that builds up in the pint or two when you're brewing. And there's two ways to really illustrate what happens with pressure. The first is if you've ever seen a pub change their kegs over, you'll know that the first pour after they've done that is very much a frothy pint. This is because of the carbonation buildup. This of course settles after they've poured their first pint or so. The other way to look at it is if you've bought one of those mini kegs before. And you'll know that the first thing you do before opening it is you release the pressure valve on the back and a load of hissing happens. This allows you to pour your beer, but it's also this that means that after a week your beer tastes a bit weird. This is essentially because your beer has no carbonation in it and so it goes off. Now the Pinter 2's technology aims to give you fresh beer, allowing you to pour it without froth and still keeping it carbonated. And essentially they've done this through the tap, which has a coil that your beer passes through. The aim of this is to reduce the carbonation as it travels through, so that by the time it gets to your glass, it's not just a glass of froth. Now, when I first tapped my dark matter, I did get a glass and a bit of froth. And this was kind of to be expected because actually it's still quite full at that point, but it does settle down after you've done your first glass or so. So much more like your traditional pub system. This froth does of course settle. And when you're pouring your beer, you've got two settings on that handle. You've got a 45 degree and a 90 degree angle. The 45 degree one is the one to use most of the time because that's less pressure coming out. However, when your pinter gets slightly emptier, you may need to switch to the 90 just to get the last beer out. The other thing to say about the handle is that it does lock in place at the top, but wiggling this into place does take a little bit of getting used to. And so the final thing really to say is how does the beer taste? Because that's the most important thing. There's no point having all of this tech if the beer tastes like crap. And having only made one so far, and that being the dark matter, I'm actually quite impressed. The dark matter is a nice, easy to drink stout, and it just has a very nice smooth taste to it. If I'm being completely honest, I'd have liked it to have a bit more espresso taste to it, but that's kind of personal preference. It also comes in part to one of my favorite beers being Colchester Brewery's Brazilian, which is very coffee flavored. What I am looking forward to, having tried one, is brewing some more beers over the summer months, especially trying some of the ciders and some of the more hoppy beers. So, and so having used this for a couple of weeks, is the pint or two any good? And I guess this is the point in the review to say that I come at this from someone who doesn't want to buy all of the gear for home brewing. I just want something simple that gives me a chance to dabble into it, but also doesn't mean I need to really geek out over it. And so really, I think I am the target market for the pinter. And actually having used it, it's a lot of fun. There's something a little bit more fun about being able to pour beer from a tap, especially when you've kind of been part of that whole process. The Pinter 2 feels really sturdy and really well made, and I love the way that it looks. I think it looks super cool. And more importantly, so far, in my opinion, it's produced some really nice beer. All in all, for the price and quality of a product, I actually think the Pinter 2 is quite good value. Now, if you take it at face value and I got mine for about 80 quid, then my pints have still cost about eight pounds a pint, which isn't cheap. However, let's be honest, that's my first batch. And also, you're not buying this for cheap pints. You're buying this to have some fun. And for that, I actually think the Pinter is pretty good value. If you guys do want to pick one up, I've put a link below that will save you £20 on your Pinter purchase. I'll also bring you guys another video in a few months when I've got a few brews down the line with this as well. If you've got any questions, do stick them below. This is something I have personally purchased and not something I've been given to review. And so all the opinions in this video are my own. And then finally, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel. Hit me up on Twitter if you've got any other questions as well. And I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you.